Today we're talking about the madness that are backup bottles and do we really need them? And I'm going over my collection, telling you the reasons why I have them and what I'm going to do next. So pretty, so this is my number one. Hi dolls, Laura Sparkles here. Welcome to my channel. For those of you returning and already subscribed, thank you so much for your support and liking my videos, subscribing. It helps me a lot as I'm building this little channel here of ours. And for those of you new on the channel, welcome. So happy to have you here where we talk a lot about fragrance. I do a lot of fragrance reviews, but also fragrance declutters. I'm on a mission to curate my collection from around 200 full-size bottles down to 50 or less. So that's what we're doing here. <laughs> and I have a lot of backup bottles. There are 13 backup bottles here and I've already decluttered some as I've gotten rid of certain fragrances on this journey of mine. If you want to see my first haul video, I'll link that here for you. That'll kind of give you an idea of what I was working with at the beginning <laughs> when I started. I'm now down to 112 full-size bottles and you guys, that does not include backups. Shoot. <laughs> so I guess that brings my total to 125 full-size bottles with the backups. Well, geez, <laughs> I thought I was doing so good. I am doing so good. It's just a process and I'm definitely taking my time as I go through and curate this collection, just making sure I don't have regrets. It can be such a waste of time and resource and money, you know, getting rid of fragrances and then bringing them back or regretting all of that. So I just really want to make sure that I adore what I have and I'm very certain about the ones I do get rid of. And if I'm not certain, I'll just hold on to them. So that's my process. I actually did a decluttering video for you here. I'll link that also if you're curious, if you need inspiration. I know when I was in the throes of buying, you guys literally I'd have like five packages a day show up of fragrance for a while. It was insane. So I'm just hoping that I can inspire, you know, if you are in that mania of buying, if you want to get out of that. Maybe seeing someone else decluttering might counteract that a little bit. I'm just hoping I can be inspiration for anyone in that predicament or, you know, that just wants to cut back on buying or maybe also wants to declutter their collection. I find that there's so much content out here about accumulating and massive collections and just more, more, more. I do, of course, there are also decluttering videos, but it just seems to be more cool, more in, you know, the larger the collection. Most people desire that more. I don't. I personally feel like I'm really happy to get to know all these fragrances, but I could have done the same thing with samples too. So <laughs> I've learned a lesson. I know that I don't need all these full-size bottles and I just find a collection of fragrances, like 10 out of 10 fragrances that you absolutely love and maybe a smaller collection. I mean, still my goal is 50 bottles, so it's not like tiny. <laughs> There'll be plenty of options within that 50 but I find that much more easy to wrap my head around. So I actually use the fragrances and it's not like I'm just hoarding. I, right now, you guys, I feel like I was just hoarding and still, I still am kind of hoarding fragrances. Like it's kind of insane. <laughs> and I notice this, like I have friends that come over and I'm, I'm generous. Like I still want to give them things and help them find scents they don't know about. And, but I just notice I'm just like, no, like I don't want to give too much away, <laughs> which there's an addictive quality. So all that to be said, I want to walk through this little collection of backups and share with you some of my favorite fragrances here because they are, and then also explore whether or not I need to hang on to all these and kind of do that in real time here with you and just have a conversation around backup bottles. <laughs> and only us in this fragrance hobby would even know what the heck I'm talking about. <laughs> Oh my gosh, isn't this so out of the norm? Like most people have probably one to five fragrances and never would think about buying a second of the same one. <laughs> but anyways, so here we go. I've organized these bottles in two categories. The first one are fragrances I suspected were being discontinued or were like limited edition. So that's this side over here. And the second side are just, there's no threat of <laughs> <laughs> being discontinued as far as I know. These are just ones that I fell in love with and thought I needed all kinds of extras of them. <laughs> so I'll just start here on the left. So the first two here on the left are from one of my favorite perfume houses. 
This is like top five favorite, at least. This is Martine Mikaleff, and this is their Mon Parfum line. This is Mon Parfum Pearl and Mon Parfum Crystal. These little pearls have been put on by hand, each and every one of them. It's complete insanity. <laughs> the level of detail on these bottles and with Mon Parfum Cristal every one of the little crystals same thing just so gorgeous these this bottle in particular just does it for me and the juice inside I mean look at the sparkle it's like diamonds <laughs> they're so much prettier in person especially this one with the rose gold I said this before I adore this bottle it's gorgeous and the juice inside might be one of my all-time favorite fragrances ever in life. So Mon Parfum Pearl, this is kind of a fresh, easy, breezy rose. I love rose fragrances. It's one of my favorite notes, probably is my favorite note. And it's just done so well, this one. It's like kind of powdery, but also really fresh. It's, you know, tons of rose. I could consider this a signature scent. This is like easy everyday wear all season. So I heard through the grapevine that they were discontinuing these on their website. They like slashed the prices in half. So <laughs> I think this one used to be 200 US, something along those lines. And now it's going for under 70. It looks like the sale is still going on. I just checked today and there's still some of these left over. So it just felt like a really great deal. And then I also heard they were discontinuing this line. So I bought a whole bunch of them <laughs> for that reason because I just was afraid, right? It was like FOMO. I, I want to make sure I had these in my collection if they were in fact discontinuing them. I've however heard since that they might just be discontinuing the bottles. I actually emailed Mikaleff directly and asked and they said they were discontinuing them. And then I've heard from others that, you know, that they're just changing the bottles and bringing them back. Probably like what they did with Note Vigny. Um, that one is still available. It's just in a different bottle now. So that might be what's happening with these. I just didn't want to take my chances. And the juice alone, the price of these just went down so much that it felt like it, I should take advantage of that. <laughs> so this one I bought so many, you guys. So I have this practically full bottle. I mean, there's been, there's a little bit of a dent, but not too much. So I have these three of Mon Parfum Pearl. They're full, like there's a bottle in there. I haven't opened them yet. And then for Mon Parfum Cristal, I have one, you know, 100 ml bottle and then one 30 ml. And this was a gift with purchase they were doing back in May. So I'll go over this Mon Parfum Cristal, you guys. This is, like I said, one of my favorite scents ever. Mon Parfum Pearl is easygoing, breezy, light, but a little powdery rose, just super easy for me to wear. And this one is also super easy for me to wear, but like sex kitten level 100. <laughs> it's like so, <sighs> if I had to choose, I would choose Mon Parfum Cristal. If I had to, it doesn't necessarily feel like you want to wear this day and night, although you could, if you are like just uber sex kitten this could be a signature scent <laughs> for me it feels like a little bit much but i might do it yeah watch me i might very well do that it is oh, the sexiest thing i've ever smelled oh my god i just get lost i can't i can't even talk <sighs> there's something there's like a touch gourmand but not it's not overly sweet it's like musky sexy rose so in this one you have pink pepper and cinnamon at the top whatever they did <sighs> like i can't it kind of feels like it could be a really great fall fragrance, but it's also just really good whenever you want to be sexy. <laughs> so pink pepper, cinnamon at the top, in the middle, Bulgarian rose, and Madagascar vanilla, and at the base, toffee, amber, and musk. I can't. It's, it's the best thing ever. <laughs> it really is. Mm. I just want to keep smelling it. So it's a fan favorite. It's, I mean, definitely one of my favorite fragrances of all time. Check it out. I would definitely recommend this. And for the price too, this one, you know, $70, 60, 60 some odd dollars. This is such a great, again, like fresh powdery rose, signature scent worthy. It feels like this one is just highly underrated and I never hear it being talked about in the community, but it is so lovely. It is there's fruit. Actually, I read you the notes too on this. The top is blackberry, rose, mandarin, orange. In the middle, peony, may rose, and heliotrope. 
and at the base, powdery notes, white musk, and vanilla. There's a sexy, sweet, like fresh innocence to this with, you know, just a touch of fruit. It's not too sweet. You definitely need to be a rose lover in order to enjoy this one. I think it's highly underrated and we all, if you like any of the fragrances that I've recommended so far, you will love these two. <laughs> like this is almost the epitome of my taste. I love rose. I love, you know, a little bit of powderiness, not too much but a little bit of powder. I love a little freshness. I love musks, especially like cleaner musk, a little vanilla. I'm not super into like heavy gourmands necessarily or, or like really, really fruity fragrance, but these are my taste. So if you are like twinning with me, <laughs> please check these out. And <laughs> now might be a great time. I'm sure if they are going to reintroduce them in a new bottle, the prices will just go up again. So you get the juice at an incredible deal right now if you can find them. And yeah, luckily this one is not as popular, so you might still be able to find this in the larger format. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> it's like this adorable little baby in its little silk pillow. Look at that. What a cute little thing. Oh my gosh, I love it. So yeah, this is the 30 mil. It's done just as beautifully and the juice inside you guys is where it's at. This actually has a little label. Mine has kind of worn off <laughs> by now. And you know how many bottles I have. I don't, like I just really try to spread myself around and give all of them love and I do a lot of testing. But this is like a go-to. If I'm going out at night, I just grab this one. You could tell there's a little dent happening. So I don't regret having these. I might've went overboard with the Mon Parfum Pearl. That might've been a little excessive. <laughs> like maybe if I had just one of them versus the three. And I do feel happy to have these Mon Parfum crystals because this is just a love. And look at this little baby. It's so cute. It's kind of hilarious. I was just saying how I'm not the biggest fan of Overly Sweet. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, love don't be shy extreme which is very, very sweet. <laughs> so this is a flanker of Love Don't Be Shy by Killian. It was a limited edition as far as I know. I did notice though, it's still being sold at Sephora, not on the Killian website, but still at Sephora. So there's some still out there in the retail market. So this one is orange blossom, marshmallow, vanilla. Love Don't Be Shy, they added a rose component and as you know, as I just said, I adore Rose. And I kind of do love this one too. This is when you just want to be, you know, ultra girly and feminine and uber sweet. And men die over this. I've seen it myself. <laughs> very sexy, very sweet. At the top you have Neroli and Bergamot. In the middle, Orange Blossom and Bulgarian Rose. At the base, Marshmallow, Vanilla, Musk, and Pomegranate. And it is delicious. And I was just so nervous. Once I smelled this compared to the original Love Don't Be Shy, I just knew like, oh, this is, this one's mine. The other one was not. <laughs> so I got nervous and I wanted to buy another bottle just in case it was, in case I couldn't have found it if they were, you know, going to stop carrying this. But as of now, they still have it. So that's good news, I guess. <laughs> I have gone through and and decluttered Love Don't Be Shy, the OG, and I still do want to hang on to this one, so I will keep the backup bottle too. Next here, I do have another one that's kind of sweet <laughs> and very, very fruity, so I take all that back, what I said. This one's also very heavy on the rose, and it's discontinued, which is why I have two backup bottles <laughs> of this. This is Valentina Pink by Valentino. This one to me, where like Mon Parfum Cristal is like sexy, more sophisticated, but still like uber sexy. This one is like uber cute and girly and youthful and fun. <laughs> you know, it's like a different vibe, but also sexy. And I live for this line. I have so many of them. The only one I'm not super into is the original. I have four others that I live for with this line. They are discontinued. Last I checked, pre-loved, you can find them pretty reasonably and which is why I stocked up because sometimes it happens that, you know, the market gets wiped out and then the prices go up quite a bit. So the notes on this one at the top, strawberry, blackberry, and musk. In the middle, mayrose, rose, peony. At the base, praline, cashmere wood, and amber. 
the longer I'm on this declutter journey and really testing, you guys, I test thoroughly <laughs> now, and I'm really studying notes and, and figuring out what the things I love. And I recommend that for anyone in this hobby, you know, depending on the time you can devote to that, but I'm really finding certain notes just do it for me. And this fragrance has many of those in them. <laughs> musks, like kind of clean musk and praline, definitely rose, amber, those types of notes for me really, really work. And this one feels like an extension of me. It just, it encapsulates my essence. It, it really is me <laughs> when I wear it and I adore it. It's so good for me. It's so good. It's just fun, flirty, wonderful. And I'm so happy I have these backup bottles, actually, <laughs> of this. I don't regret this one. Who knows if I'll be able to find it later. As I was thinking of all these backup bottles and why I have them and, and the reasoning for buying them, number one for sure is the threat of fragrances being discontinued. That is easily number one why I have backups, right? Number two, I think it's just because you absolutely adore the fragrance, <laughs> which that is when it gets a little excessive in my mind and maybe a little unnecessary um, as, you know, this collection of fragrances. And then the third reason I would think to have backups is if you really love the current formulation, because we know if a fragrance is not going to be discontinued, it's almost like guaranteed it'll be reformulated at some point, just the way things are going, the different guidelines and, and ingredients that can be used, and you know, when different houses have to cut back on costs and quality of ingredients, etc. So if you want to preserve and just have those original formulations, it makes sense to have backups. But then you also have to look out, you know, if you store fragrances in the correct, like cool, dark environment, yes, you can probably keep them for many, many years, but sometimes they turn. So <laughs> it's like, do you want an original formulation that you spent good money on that might turn by the time you get to it? Or do you just want to take your chances and get it pre-loved, even if it's been discontinued, or deal with the latest formulation? So that's really what I think the argument is and is not to buy <laughs> and have backup bottles. But I would love to hear your opinion and your thoughts in the comments below. Do you guys have backups and why? I'm just like would love to do a little case study and, <laughs> and explore this with others. I think those are the only three reasons really... Oh, I guess number four is that you're a hoarder <laughs> because clearly <laughs> I fall under that category. So this is a love. Like I said, I will definitely be keeping this one and the backup bottles for now. And it just brings me joy. This I can't wait to get down to the smaller collection where I could just wear these and enjoy them <laughs> because this will be one. Actually, these first four I would wear all the time if I wasn't like testing and and getting to know all these other fragrances that I'm getting rid of, but just absolutely gorgeous, fun, wonderful fragrance. The next bottle here, and this kind of starts the second category of fragrances I just fell in love with and bought backups of. <laughs> so this is Soleil Blanc by Tom Ford. This is the epitome of summer. It is this very rich, luxury, ambery sunscreen type of scent, the notes on it. Pistachio, bergamot, cardamom, and pink pepper at the top, in the mid, tuberose, ylang, ylang jasmine, and at the base, coconut, amber, tonka bean, and benzoin. And I take, anytime I go on vacation, I take this with me. It's like a staple of summertime beach front vacationing. <laughs> I'll be going to Mexico in a few weeks, and you know I'm packing this with me. I have a travel spray that I'll bring, although this one would travel pretty easy. It's a very sturdy bottle, I'd imagine. So this one just won me over the first time I got my nose on it. It is perfect for summer. Ugh. There's something, it's like slightly fresh, very creamy, very coconutty. Aside from rose, I would say my second most favoritist notes are <laughs> white florals, tuberose, jasmine, those types of things, and maybe even tuberose specifically. And this has a whole lot of tuberose in it. I'm also finding I really love cardamom notes, pink pepper, pistachio, just a lot of things that are in this beauty of a fragrance. It just gives like rich woman on a tropical vacay, like yacht vibes. <laughs> and I'm here for it. I love it. And I kind of just jumped the gun and bought an extra bottle, even though this one, I mean, I'm probably like down to here with usage. So I still have plenty left in this bottle. So this one I 
might not have purchased. So I do think I will declutter this backup bottle just because I have so many other summer fragrances that I really, really love too. And like even the summer, for instance, I don't typically wear this just day to day around my town. I live in this really moderately temperate little beach town in Northern California where it hardly gets warm. Like we have just a few weeks a year that are like hot weather and it just feels strange to wear this when it's the tiniest bit cool. <laughs> like to me, I need 80 degrees plus to wear this and we hardly get that. And, and usually during the latter part of the summer and into fall is when we do get those hotter days. And then it seems like it's kind of out of season. So really I just saved this for my vacations. And so I think it might take me a really long time to even get through this bottle. <laughs> and I just went crazy, you know, gung ho buying all these bottles. So this one I will be decluttering. The next fragrance I have here is Ariana Grande's REM. And this one I've definitely used quite a bit of for a while. I was using this to bed every night and it's just so well done and kind of something different for me. It has a very prominent lavender note I get throughout the wear of it. It's very sweet. There's like caramel and salt and fig and pear blossom. And then at the base, musk, tonka bean and sandalwood. And it just feels so cozy, but you know, sweet where it still feels girly, but then the lavender kind of brings in a more masculine take on things. And I really love this <laughs> and it's so inexpensive. Don't know that I need a full bottle of this for a backup. I don't know. I, I could very well let go of this backup. I feel like for the price, it might be better just to keep it like the, what I'll lose on selling it might not even make it worth it. I don't know this one. I'm a little perplexed <laughs> because I do love it. And it, it really has a place in my collection. I do have some other lavender fragrances also though. I don't know. So I just don't know <laughs> if I need a backup or not for this. I'll put this in the maybe pile. I do love it. I love it. I also might, I mean, I've worn it so much for me. That's quite a lot and maybe I'm less into it now. And that's the reason, you know, my argument, my biggest argument against buying backup bottles, there's so many fragrances out there. And by the time you get through your first bottle, you might not care to, ha to go through more, you know, but then on the flip side, it's like, then it gets nostalgic and it's something you've come to know and love and you want it always in your life. And I get both sides. And that that's why this is a very difficult decision, <laughs> what to let go and what not to. I will come back to this. The next backup here I have is Chanel number 19 Poudre. I actually just did my top 10 Iris video and this made the top 10. However, I'm also decluttering this <laughs> because I have an overlap of something I like just a little bit more. Although I fell in love with this right away. It is beautiful. It is like Chanel's take on comfort, which <laughs> as I mentioned in the Iris video is not like their thing necessarily. It's green, it's powdery, it's masterpiece level perfumery, just next level. At the top, there's Galbanum, Neroli, Mandarin, Orange, in the mid, Iris and Jasmine, and at the base, Vetiver, Musk, and Tonka Bean. I love this, you guys, but if this one's very clear. I will declutter my backup because I'm decluttering the actual bottle itself. <laughs> so if I kept the backup, that's like a cheater way to keep an extra bottle that's not going towards my count of 50 or less bottles. <laughs> so clearly this one I'll be decluttering. And this is just another one of those examples. Like I just got so excited when I found something I loved and just would buy, 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 buy. And I don't need this much. And I already have something else that I like better for me, which is Iris Poudre by Frederick Mull. And they're just different fragrances, but they serve a similar place in my collection. So both of these will be going sadly, but also not sadly. <laughs> The next bottle I have a backup of is Delina Exclusive by Parfums de Marly. I went nuts with these. I think I had at one point this backup bottle, a Delina OG, and then all three <laughs> of the Delina collection. I have since decluttered Delina, the OG, and then also La Rose and the backup bottle for Delina. This one though is another super easy reach and I love having it in my collection. I adore this. There's again, a little bit of powder, but not too much. That is just like my thing. 
but then there's like some fresh juiciness with the pear and you get some lychee and bergamot at the top. In the mid, there's Turkish rose, oud, and incense, and at the base, vanilla, amber, and woody notes. It's just a very sexy, easy, flirty, fun. I always get compliments when I wear this. I think actually all of them here I do, except for maybe not the Tom Ford, but I kind of wear that more for me, but everything else... I get compliments on easily. <laughs> it's delightful. I love these bottles. The little Parfums de Marley bottles are so pretty. What I would have recommended, and I mentioned this in the Delina video, I'll actually link that for you here too. What I would have liked is they kept the Delina original packaging with the color and La Rose, but then this one felt like it should be just a little bit darker instead of, I don't like how the name, I think it's like kind of tacky that the name's there. Maybe they had to rush to get it to the market and <laughs> just went with it. I would have loved it just a little bit darker because it is to me a little more seductive and a little more richer and deeper than Delina original. Anyways, I love it. Do I need a backup bottle of it? That's the question. I feel like I do not need a backup bottle of this. <laughs> I think I just came to that epiphany. It's it's one that I love. Oh, I don't know, you guys. This is where I feel like I'm not sure. It feels like this will be in production for some time. I'm really on the fence. It feels, my logical side is like, no, I don't need it because I could always rebuy it if ever I get through this bottle. <laughs> but then another side of me is like, oh no, what if they stop selling it? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'll leave it to a vote. This is what I'm going to do. You guys, I'm very torn on this. I always want to have this in my collection if I can help it. It's just one of those for me. But I have a lot of those, so <laughs> who knows how quickly I'll get through this bottle. I'm going to leave it up to you guys. Leave in the comments, should I keep this backup bottle or should I sell it? Leaving it up to you. Popular vote wins. <laughs> I'll give it through the end of September. Tell me down below what you think and I will just do whatever you guys suggest because I am very much in the middle. It feels like it's resources tied up. It also, if you sell it, you know, you lose money on the sale for sure. So that's kind of there. Inflation, you know, <laughs> there's all kinds of factors, I guess. For me, the biggest thing is just the uncertainty of it not being there if I were ever wanting to buy it again. <sighs> But I also don't feel like it doesn't, I just have one little drawer of these that fit like little pretzels, <laughs> like a little Tetris situation and it fits just fine. So I don't know. Tell me below what you think and I'll just go with it. My last backup bottle here is one of my all time favorites. This I bought, this is my first niche bottle of fragrance I bought in Paris. It was my first trip to Paris, 2005. I was, you know, mid twenties. I could hardly afford this. <laughs> I think I even got the big bottle at the time. I love this to me. Okay, so Lipstick Rose is this rosy, glamorous, kind of powdery violet. It just reminds me of like bright pink lipstick and like 50s glam. <laughs> it's just so next level to me. I adore this. This one is super potent for me, like humongous beast mode, but in a way that I can appreciate <laughs> because you might know that I'm not the biggest fan of like super beast mode fragrance, but this one I am. The rose on this is gorgeous. There's tons and tons and tons of violet, which is another note that I am obsessed with. There's musks, like a very clean white musk. There's vanilla. There's some ambery notes, iris. I'm sure that's where you get the powder from. And then some fruit, uh, raspberry grapefruit. So there's like a little bit of freshness, but it's just all rose and powder and violet. I even get maybe some aldehydes or a little bit of soapiness. I just pictured like Marilyn Monroe wearing this. I know allegedly she wore Chanel number no. five. I mean, <laughs> not alleged. I think it's a fact. I just picture her wearing this. It's like so girly, so... I don't know, like fun, but classic. And there's something in this fragrance that reminds me of old world red wine. What could that be? I don't even know what it is, but it's that same feeling. It's like French red wine. Like when you go sit at a cafe in Paris and you order wine and they all just taste like this smells. 
like something about it. Maybe because I bought it during my first trip to Paris, so I just associate that. But there's like something aged and a good way. Classic, refined, and I love it. <laughs> I love it. So I do have a backup bottle of this and I am going to hang on to it because this is like the epitome of me and my fragrance journey. I love this so much that <laughs> I have this beautiful little sketch that an artist friend made for me, um, an artist fragrance friend. It's just, I don't know, it's just my, it's just mine. <laughs> just like, it represents this whole crazy journey of fragrance and what it means to me and I love it. So clearly I'm keeping this backup bottle. All right, so here's what I'm decluttering. <laughs> it's not much, but it's something. So for sure the Chanel number no. 19 Poudre and the Tom Ford. I have been so resistant to finalizing this video and editing and posting it and oh, these backup bottles have just, have shown a light on my addiction. <laughs> more than anything I've decluttered so far in my collection. I think because they're fragrances that I really love and a lot of the stuff I'm already getting rid of are kind of the outliers and a little easier. Oh, so <laughs> I've been thinking about it and I've changed what I'm keeping and I'm going to be a little more, I'll be a little more ruthless about it <laughs> than originally filmed. And this typically happens, I've noticed this with some of my other videos, it's a whole roller coaster, you guys, this decluttering. Like, I remember filming the Dior Poison video and I had thought I was gonna get rid of so many of them and then I filmed and during filming I was smelling them all and like, no, I just wanna keep all of them. <laughs> it's kind of the vibe. And then I thought about it again. Like, why, I have to remind myself, like, why am I doing this and what collection do I want? And I need to get rid of all these, it's just insane. So. These are the perfumes that I'm keeping. You'll remember this is the same group of, you know, what's in my collection right now. And then these are the backups I'm keeping. So five, so that's not bad. <laughs> so I will get rid of Delina Exclusive. I actually wore a Valentina Pink today and it is so gorgeous. I almost wanna keep both bottles, but when am I gonna use these? Like really? <laughs> I think I have a greater risk of them turning than I do actually like not being able to find it and running out. So I'm gonna keep one of the boxes of Valentina Pink. It's this very lovely, you know, fruity, floral, rosy, like fresh, flirty, fun fragrance. So I'm keeping that one. I'm gonna keep one of the boxes of Pearl, the Bon Parfum Pearl. I'm gonna keep both of these Cristal, one's 100 mil, one's 30, as you know, and then one of these my only lipstick rose aside from the bottle just because I have the little bottle here the little 50 ml and this is 100 ml this one's almost out <laughs> so not too shabby these are like 10 out of 10s for me so <sighs> okay <laughs> and then here's what I'm gonna get rid of after all that um, I am gonna get rid of the REM I feel like I'll just be sick of it by the time I go through the full bottle and I have some other lavender fragrances I'm gonna Get rid of both of these poudres as we knew. I'll also declutter two of the Mon Parfum pearls. And then what I've added here, I will declutter the Love Don't Be Shy Extreme. I do like it, but I'm not like in love and I don't know that I'll ever go through the full bottle anytime soon. And then I will also declutter Delina Exclusive. So that's my final answer. All right guys, so that's the video. Please do tell me what you think about backups. Is it crazy? I mean, this, just my backup collection alone is like three times as much as any sane <laughs> woman has in her perfume collection. I'm not saying that to be derogatory to any of us because I'm sure we all have plenty of our fragrances, but it's just a little absurd. And I'm here for it, honestly. <laughs> I'm here for it. If this is my major vice, then so be it, world. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks so much for watching the video. I'd love to hear your comments below. Right now, this month, I'm actually giving away two of my fragrances on my September fragrance tray. I'll link the video here for you. All you have to do is go over there, subscribe. You could do that here while you're on the channel. Go to that video, write the comment I ask for in the video, like it, and you're entered. The winner will be announced in the September wrap-up video that I'll be doing at the end of the month. So if there's any kind of 
comments asking for information or to go to this app or WhatsApp, please ignore that. That is not me. There's been some spammy stuff going on. So I will always announce the winner in the video itself. And all you have to do from that point is email or send me a DM at Instagram with your name and address and you'll get to choose your two bottles of fragrance. How fun is that? So monthly giveaways happen. I am also on Instagram if you want to follow me there. I'm at Laura Sparkles underscore. I do a lot of stuff around body positivity, lingerie, that kind of thing, like part of that movement. And <laughs> I really like the Instagram platform in that regard. They seem like they censor the least. I've had my trouble on TikTok, <laughs> Lord knows. So I don't put any of that content there or I, I wouldn't do that here. I mean, it's all fragrance here. Anyway, so please do follow me over there. I do a lot of fun stuff. The most fun I have, I would say is on TikTok. So follow me on TikTok also if you wanna have a little more fun. I love you all. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next one. All right, bye. Bye, kisses.